Night after cloudy night had passed over the hollow, but while cloudy nights might keep the telescope indoors, they do not stop construction on the observatory. And so I pushed ahead all day and at night sent the drone up to look over the mountain ridge, the setting sun, and imagine the day the observatory was done and I could look upon other stars holding their own worlds with their own twilights. When I began work on the observatory a month ago, the days had been hot and humid, brutal work to hand dig a hole through heavily rocky ground. But the work persisted, the pier was laid in, and the outline of the deck was set. I did the work between gardening chores and teaching classes on natural history, making no compromises anywhere, building always for strength and stability. The deck itself is not large, a mere 8 feet by 8 feet, sufficient for the micro-observatory I have in mind, and the timbers for the deck frame were chosen to last, heavy pressure treated 2 by 8s Every joint was screwed together with heavy-duty galvanized screws, and reinforced with heavy galvanized joist hangers. The deck itself was built around the pier so that at no place will it physically touch it, and in the end, despite the small size of the deck, some two dozen concrete deck blocks were laid over the ground to make it rock solid and stable. Ultimately, we have a floating deck to form a floor of the observatory surrounding a floating pier, the roots of which are buried deep in rocky soil. Both pier and deck should be remarkably stable. Additional framing was laid in just around the pier so that there would be no overhanging of floorboards making them all the stronger. But enough space was left in the floating region so that if I should need to remove the rubber cover that I'll put down later on to access the space beneath, it won't be difficult to get my arms down there. You may recall that in the last video, after removing the sauna tube from the pier once the concrete had cured, I then shaped an additional layer of clay-like quickrete concrete over the entire pier, creating an extremely strong double pillar design that should be almost entirely water resistant. Since winters here can occasionally be wet, I did not want to allow water an opportunity to seep into small cracks and crevices within the pier superstructure, freeze, and enlarge those cracks. The pier should now be very secure against this, even without the observatory structure over it. From there, building the deck was a matter of painstakingly laying over each plank and screwing them down. I used screws for additional strength at all the joints. And after each deck place was laid down, the position of the joist was carefully marked on top of the planks to clearly mark the strong join areas for when we finally get into phase four of the observatory's construction, building the walls of the observatory themselves. When nearly all the flooring was laid down, my wife Daphne lent a hand and painted the pier with a thick and durable white primer. This is not just for appearance, but to further enhance the pier's ability to resist water, especially during winter when water can work its way into cracks and freeze, and it should also help to control concrete dust settling from the pier. I absolutely do not want that on any of the observatory's delicate electronics. We're a long way from done, but I gotta tell you, it's a good feeling to finally be battening down that last board. With the lower parts of the observatory done, I can now focus on planning for the structure to be built over the telescope. But for now, wonder of wonders, the weatherman has predicted as much as a week of clear skies. I'm going to set up to use the observatory as it stands by setting up the Wi-Fi expanders. I'm using TP-Link Deco expanders. And for the moment, I've simply screwed down an old ice cream bucket to a fence pole and placed one of the expanders in that bucket and the other expander over there at the observatory to boost the signal immediately coming from the relatively weak transmission capability of the mini PC's Wi-Fi. With both expanders set to 2.8 GHz, they give a solid and reliable signal all the way from the observatory to my cottage lab 100 meters away. At the observatory, I took a moment to run an autofocus routine and then used Nina's three polar alignment feature to quickly get the mountain telescope lined up on true north. After I moved to the computer station at the cottage lab to control the observatory and line it up on tonight's target, the heart of the Heart Nebula. As in the previous test, the system is running beautifully with a strong Wi-Fi signal going to and from the observatory and excellent tracking averaging between 0.5 and 0.7 error. The excellent optics of the telescope mounted on a solid pier combined with beautiful dark of a border one sky delivered a splendid view of vast spaces of molecular ionized hydrogen, oxygen, and sulfur, 
and stacked flows of stardust resembling the teeth of mountains. And with all tests good and everything running perfectly, it's time to get on to the next phase of construction, setting up more permanent Wi-Fi and power poles, and planning for the observatory structure itself.